Hello and welcome to a video about height fields. So in this video we'll be going over the height field node and the height field noise node. So starting off with the height field, um, if you're starting off with making terrain with them, there's really only two settings you need to worry about. The first one being the size parameter. This does exactly what it says it does, is it uh, shows you what size the height field is. Now um, something to keep in mind is that this is in meters usually. So here you can see the height field is a thousand by a thousand meters. The second option is the division mode and paired with it the grid spacing. spacing. So in this case we are having a height field of a thousand by a thousand with a grid spacing of two. Now this is the amount of meters per voxel. And a voxel is basically a volume version of a polygon, sort of. A three-dimensional pix pixel is a good way to visualize it. So in this case we have, we should have a resolution of 500 by 500 and if we middle mouse click this height field that is confirmed. We have 500 by 500 as you can see here resulting in 250,000 um, voxels. Personally I'd recommend doing the by axis division mode. Now this changes this thing here to grid samples and that means that you can directly set a value for this grid axis. So um, for the sake of exporting you can set this to 512 for instance. And as you can see here when middle mouse clicking we have 512 by 512 voxels resulting in 262, 144 voxels. So Let's get started with the noise part. Um, noises are the most basic way of giving shape to a height field. So if you go over to this noisy noise, you can see that it gives a pretty natural look and look. And if you'd manipulate this a bit further, then you'd be able to probably use as an end result. But you probably want to layer it. So you have cell noise, which isn't as natural, but already provides an interesting pattern you could maybe use for something else. And with Houdini 16 a new noise was introduced, more mechanical looking noise. So in this case we're looking at the Chebby Chef noise and that's a very nice noise to use when you're um, looking at more hard surface uh, things maybe for texturing or if you're looking for a different way to approach your terrain. So when you're using the noise you can just type press tab and type HF and all the height field nodes will show up but in this case we just want to type noise. And we're going to pick the height field noise one. In here we're greeted with a bunch of options but the main ones you need to worry about are center noise, amplitude, element size and noise type and maybe roughness if you're up for editing the noise a bit more. So, what this amplitude, let's go to the uh, center noise first. Center noise will allow you to center the noise around zero, as it says. And with a sparse convolution, as the noise type says here, you won't notice that effect too, too much. So if we untick it, you can see that it doesn't affect it as much. Uh, the noise just starts floating in the air. But if we, say, switch this to whirly, cellular, so the cell noise I just showed, you can see it looks a lot different than from the one I just showed you. That is because I have this center noise ticked. If I untick it, you can see that the bottom is flat on the, um, the grid and you now have something that might be easier to work with. Moving over to the amplitude, this dictates how much the maximum uh, deformation is going to be. So basically how high your noise is going to be. If we up this, you can see that it goes higher, and if we lower this, it goes lower. So yes, it shouldn't be too hard there. Uh, the element size is how large your noise is going to be. So if we up this, you can see that the um, noise becomes larger, and if we make this smaller, it becomes smaller again. Now, for those that might have worked with noises before, uh, this is the inverse of the frequency. So with a frequency, if you um, raise the frequency, the element size will become smaller. And if you lower the frequency, the element size will become larger. So off to the noise type. 
Um, I'm not going to go through all of these because there's a lot of them and that would just take too much time. But something to keep in mind is everything from whirly to alligator, so that's the bottom seven noises, is very useful for um, serving as a bass noise. So you can start off with these and then layer them on top of each other. And everything above it, so from periodic flow to sinoid, sinusoid, uh, these are good for detailing your um, terrain. So for instance, if I pick uh, periodic purlin, you can see that it is already a lot more detailed than that cell noise we just had. Uh, normal purlin might give a bit better of an idea. There we go. So this is already a lot more detailed and will allow you to detail your terrain a lot more. And about details, um, with roughness, you can determine how much detail you get. So if you lower the roughness, you can see that um, your terrain becomes a lot less detailed. And if you increase it, it'll become a lot more um, layered, so to say. Now, we also have max octaves and lacunarity. Uh, what those mean is the octaves is sort of a roughness. The only difference is, is that the roughness multiplies the octaves. So the octaves basically means how many times the noise can apply itself to itself, which is what a fractal is. The noise applies itself to itself. And the lacunarity is a multiplier for how much the noise um, decreases in size. So if I increase this, you can see that it's going to get a lot more detail because um, the noise becomes smaller with every loop. And again, the roughness will kind of make it more or less rougher. Although I found that around 0.5 is usually um, a good place to go. Um, last, we have offset, which just can serve as a seed slider because this will offset your noise. And if you can see, it looks like it's moving and that's because we're offsetting it. And what I'm doing here is I'm middle mouse clicking on the channel, I'm moving up a bit and I'm moving my mouse left and right. All right, so this concludes the intro to height fields and um, I'll see you in the next video where we're gonna talk about distortion and layering noises. Thank you for watching.